It's good to have you join us on another fresh episode of Just Nigeria, brought to you by the BBC and Channels Television. Here, we trap stories on social media in the news and dissect them. I am Zainab Bala. Let's start with our top story. The National Assembly, comprising of the Senate and the House of Representatives, is Nigeria's highest legislative body, making laws and holding the executive to account. But since 1999, how well has it lived up to these duties? As the 10th Assembly prepares to assume its duties, what should be its focus? In this report, Just Nigeria's Wali Fakile tracks how the National Assembly has impacted Nigeria's democracy. In the heart of Abuja, the Nigerian capital, stands the National Assembly where the constitution reigns supreme. Since 1999, it's been the voice of the people, a democratic shrine of some sort. Here, laws are made and the government kept in check. But how have these lawmakers fared and how effective have they been in this noble task from the Fourth Republic till now? Since the return to democratic rule in 1999, the National Assembly has been a critical institution in Nigeria's political landscape, comprising of the Senate with 109 members and the 360-member House of Representatives. The National Assembly has four key responsibilities. Lawmaking. We'll come back to that in a bit. The National Assembly oversees activities of the executive arm of government. This includes conducting investigations on government agencies and officials and holding them to account. Members of the National Assembly represent the interests of majority and minority ethnic groups from Nigeria's six geopolitical zones at the federal level. And finally, The National Assembly has the power to amend the Nigerian constitution to reflect the evolving needs and aspirations of Nigerians. Let's go back to the most important role of this arm of government, lawmaking. How exactly does it carry out this role? Nigeria's National Assembly passes laws through a well-defined legislative process that involves several stages. The first stage is introduction of a bill. A bill is a proposed law that is presented to either the Senate or House of Reps for consideration. It can be initiated by any members of the two chambers, the president or any individual or organization. Then comes the first reading of the bill. This is when the proposed law is introduced to members of the National Assembly and the title of the bill is read out by the clerk. The next stage is a second reading where details of the bill are debated and discussed by members of the National Assembly. After the second reading, the bill is referred to a committee for further scrutiny. This is the committee stage. The fifth stage is when the committee presents its report to the originated chamber of the bill. The recommendations are then debated and voted on by members of the respective legislative chamber. What follows is the third reading of the bill and this is the sixth stage. The bill is read out in its final form and voted on by members of the legislative chamber where it originated. If the bill is passed by a simple majority, it is sent to the other chamber of the National Assembly for consideration. This is the seventh stage. If the bill is passed by a simple majority there, it is sent to the president for assent. But in cases where there are disagreements between the two chambers, a conference committee is set up to resolve this. The final stage is the assent by the president. The president has the power to either sign the bill into law or veto it. If the president signs the bill, it becomes law and gazetted. If the president vetoes the bill, it is sent back to the National Assembly for further consideration. There are instances where lawmakers break away from these processes to give a bill accelerated consideration, but it is rarely done. It's really a challenge right now, and not only is it a challenge, it's not a very transparent process because there's not the ability of the National Assembly to post some of this legislation, so you don't even know where it is. There's legislation that goes from second to third reading. There's been changes and we haven't gotten a comment. To make a law for a country, you need to ensure 
that there is participation, there is dialogue, and there is inclusion, and that all voices are heard. If you are practicing the presidential system of government and you are running a bicameral legislature with upper house and lower house, so the processes are not really different from one country to the other. You have to run the process. Over the years, the National Assembly has passed several laws that have had significant impact on the lives of Nigerians. Let's see some of them. The bill was passed by the 7th Assembly in 2011 after more than 10 years since it was first introduced. This law grants Nigerians right to access information held by public institutions subject to certain exemptions. It was a huge step towards transparency and accountability in Nigeria. Another major achievement of the National Assembly is the passage of the Not Too Young to Run Bill in 2018 by the 8th Assembly. This law lowered the age limit for running for political office, making it possible for more young people to participate in Nigeria's democracy. It shows that citizens can actually galvanize and change National Assembly public policy making, um, and that Not Too Young to Run Bill actually increased youth suffrages. Um, the presidential contesting is now from 40 to 30. The passage of the bill is arguably the biggest achievement of the 9th Assembly. The Act seeks to increase transparency, promote local content, and create a more competitive and effective oil and gas sector. The Petroleum Industry Act was a game changer, right? However, things like the removal of subsidy, which were part of the, the bill, you know, till today, we still have that debate on whether to remove subsidy or not and things like that. So that's also a caution to the, the National Assembly that when you pass bills, look at it. Don't pass something and approve that, oh, it's going to be removed. And then the next day they tell you, you now say you're not part of it. The bill was passed in 2004 by the Fifth Assembly and later amended in 2014. It established a new contributory pension scheme for Nigerian workers in both public and private sectors. Just as there have been landmark bills passed by the National Assembly, there have also been bills that drew the eye of Nigeria. Now, this is perhaps the most controversial bill to have emanated from the Senate. The legislation was tagged protection from internet falsehood and manipulation and for other related matters bill 2019. It drew criticisms but made it to the committee stage. Unlike other parts of the world, there's not that easy access that people have to their legislators. There's not that, um, there's not the constituent services that you usually have, where you can call your legislator and get a response and things like that. So people need to resort to the outlets they have, usually social media or TV and things like that. There are 360 members of House of Reps and 109 senators. Any of these ones can bring any bill. And once the bill is brought and is slated, and you have a first reading, it is important to hear it. The bill named National Agency for the Education, Rehabilitation, and Deradicalization and Integration of Repentant Insurgents in Nigeria 2020 was introduced at the Ninth Senate. It was roundly condemned by past and present members of the National Assembly. The bill sought to regulate the use and management of Nigeria's water resources. The House of Reps was forced to withdraw the bill after a huge public outcry. While those bills were controversial, parts were considered, some were thrown out and outrightly rejected by the National Assembly. In March 2022, the House of Representatives and Senate threw out five proposals meant to give women more concessions in politics and promote gender equality. Three of those bills were reported for consideration, but nothing has been heard from the National Assembly since then. Women need more representation in governance. It's dropped drastically, but one of the worst. You know, when you have countries like Rwanda that are over 50% in terms of representation, why can't Nigeria do that? A lot of Nigerians do not yet see 
and embrace gender equality. And so, that's why you see that over the years, at every constitutional amendment process, we've not been able to muster the number of votes to make women focus bills passed. While amending the Constitution in 2022, members of the National Assembly rejected the bill meant to allow Nigerians abroad to be part of the country's electoral process. The bill sought to amend the Constitution and provide for the office of the mayor of the FCT to replace the FCT minister, but it was widely rejected by lawmakers. And while making a mark with bills like the PIB, the 9th National Assembly has been criticized for being a rubber stamp to the executive. If we begin to assess the various legislative sessions and we assess them on the metrics of how well they were able to hold the executive accountable, the 9th Assembly will probably be the lowest one. I think that characterization is influenced by the positioning and conduct of the 8th National Assembly. The Eighth National Assembly was led by Senator Bukola Saraki, and it was always in conflict with the executive. The Tenth Assembly will be inaugurated on 5th June, a week after President-elect Bola Tinubu is sworn in on May 29th. Through the National Assembly, the President has assented to over 100 bills in total. This is the highest since the return to Siburu. The closest one to it was the 5th National Assembly that had 98 bills accepted to. However, there are still weaknesses in this National Assembly. Agenda of the 10th Assembly should focus on a couple of things. The first has to do with um, areas of economic recovery. We have an increasing debt portfolio and we need to make sure that we tackle that. That means things like tax reform so we can make sure that individuals who are supposed to pay and contribute to the debt burden have it because we need to be increasing government ratios. We need to be digitizing processes to reduce corruption. In their utterance with the bills that they propose and that they pass, they must ensure that one Nigeria unity and the good of everyone is taken into account. Despite its many challenges, the National Assembly as Nigeria's federal legislative arm remains a critical institution in the country's democracy. As Nigeria continues to face political and economic challenges, experts say it would be up to lawmakers to ensure that the voices of over 200 million Nigerians are heard and their interests adequately represented. Wali Fakile, Just Nigeria. Hopefully, Nigeria's incoming National Assembly surpasses the feat of its predecessors. Because